Welcome to Cooking with Chef Michael Ross. I look forward today to share three recipes with you. I have a shrimp and calamari, I have a Mellor duck breast, and also I have a chocolate mousse made with avocado that's gonna knock your socks off. A little bit about Chef Michael now. I was inspired by my mother and my grandmother cooking in the family. We never went out to dinner, we always had home cooked meals. And that encouraged me to go to culinary school. After culinary school, I started in the country club business, worked my way into hotels, and then I started my own restaurants. Um, I really look forward to cooking with friends and family on my days off, and I just love to cook. I have a passion about it, and that's what makes me wake up in the morning and go to work. ready for our first course now. We have pepper, shrimp, and calamari with celery root, pea puree, and arugula cell. Now we're going to get started. We have our celery root here. I'm going to peel it by cutting it. You can't really use a carrot peeler. It's better to use a chef's knife. And we're just going to clean around. And what we're going to do is boil this. And we're going to also add a little bit of potato when we boil it to bring, bring the texture together for a nice creamy puree. It has a lot of um, good antioxidants and vitamins. Now we're going to also add the potato to the celery puree to give it a little better texture and bring it together because it tends to, the celery puree tends to be a little watery. So this is going to make it come together. This dish used to be in one of my restaurants in the Seabright, New Jersey, and it was one of my top appetizers. So we're going to dice up some celery, I mean not celery, but shallots. And shallots are a little sweeter, not as strong. Brings the, gives it nice flavor. Now we're going to add our ingredients to the water. Now next we're going to prep our seafood, the calamari and the shrimp. We have the shrimp here, they're easy peeled shrimp. And all we're going to do is pinch the tail and the shell comes right off. The shrimp, we're going to butterfly a little more once I uh, peel them. These shrimp, the size is 21-25. Uh, um, it's a perfect size for appetizer. It's going to complement the, the portion size of the calamari also. This dish has a lot of different flavors. You have the, the puree, puree which is creamy. You have the pea puree that is also sweet. You have the pepper on the shrimp. And the calamari has a nice texture to it. Um, we'll crisp it up a little bit. And now I'm going to set this to the side and we're going to prep our calamari. We're going to cut it about half inch the tubes into half inch circles. The calamari, here we just have tubes and we're looking to get about a half inch cut on the tubes and with the shrimp what we're looking for is making sure that they're deveined and we're going to open them up just a little more so when we cook them they butterfly and it helps us uh, do a nice presentation on the plate. I'm so excited about this. We 
We're gonna add a bit of whole butter. bit of salt. Now we're going to puree. Alrighty here, we're going to get ready for the pea puree. I'm just going to put a little salt water on. That's going to come to a boil, and then we're going to add our peas. The sweet peas. As that's working, we're going to start with our shrimp and calamari. Put a little bit of coconut oil in a saute pan. Coconut oil, I like the flavor that it gives the seafood, plus it has a high flame content where it doesn't burn as easy as regular butter or um, olive oil or things like that. And really, I really like the flavor that coconut oil gives the seafood. Okay, we're going to add the shrimp to the saute pan. Get a nice sizzle going here. See how the shrimp are starting to open up and butterfly, give you that round Look, it'll help me um, present it better on the plate. The, the black peppercorns to make it the pepper shrimp. We're going to add black peppercorns and cayenne pepper to this dish. And we'll have the nice balance of sweet, spicy, and great textures of fish or seafood. Add our calamari. All right, we're gonna start the pea puree. I'm just gonna strain the peas a little bit. I'm gonna keep some of the liquid. I'm gonna put it here in the blender. All right, we're gonna add some baby spinach to the pea puree just to help with the color. This is gonna help it turn very green and help with the plate presentation. Alrighty, we're getting back to the calamari and shrimp here. It's almost ready. We're going to add our, our garlic and our shallots to that. Like I said, we want to add it almost when it's done so we just, we don't overcook the garlic and shallots to give it a burnt flavor or anything like that. Just will enhance it. Add our fresh cracked pepper. And a little bit of cayenne pepper. Oh, smelling delicious. Starting to get nice color. We don't want to overcook it. We want it to be tender. Okay, so we're done with it. The shrimp is ready. We're going to bring things together now. All right, we're going to start our plate up here. This is our celery root. We have our calamari. We're going to get a little bit of our arugula salad. Our shrimp and calamari we're going to put in there. Let's toss it with a little bit of olive oil. This is going to go right in the middle here. Calamari. All right, we're going to get our peas now. And just garnish it with a little bit of the fresh peas. 
And then we could get our cayenne pepper and just maybe put a little around the sides. Alrighty, now we have our finished dish here. It's our pepper shrimp and calamari with celery and pea puree made with a lot of love. Okay guys, we're on course two and wow, wow, wow. I can't wait to show you this one. It's one of my favorites. It's the pan roasted mallard duck breast. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna make a sweet potato mash. We're gonna have some roasted asparagus with lemon zest. And we're gonna make a uh, cherry gastric sauce with apples and ginger. Can't wait to make this magic happen. Uh, what we're gonna do first, we have to cut the sweet potato, get this going, boiling. Sweet potato will take about 10 minutes. It cooks pretty quick. And as that's cooking, we're gonna get our duck prepped and our gastric sauce prepped, our cherry. You wanna make the, about a medium dice. Put them in a little bit of salt water. And this duck, we're gonna cook medium rare. Alrighty, we're gonna put this on the stove. As that's getting ready, we're gonna start our cherry sauce. We're gonna put our dry cherries in here with a little bit of honey. Instead of using sugar, we try to use all natural sugars. I'm gonna add a little bit of maple syrup. And some apple cider vinegar. All right, so we're gonna prep our duck breast here. This is a Meller duck breast. It's the fat part contains a lot of fat and our trick to this is slow cooking it, rendering it. So what we wanna do, we wanna skewer it. Pretty good on the salt, both sides. I'm gonna add a little bit of the black pepper. So we're gonna put this in the pan. We wanna render all the fat out of it slowly and get the skin as crispy as possible. Now we're gonna prep our asparagus. We've got pretty thick ones, so when they're this thick, what I'd like to do is uh, peel them a little bit, okay? Because sometimes the skin, you know, makes it a little tougher to eat, so we'll give it a little peel here. And then what we're gonna do is zest a lemon. Now you see our duck is starting to sizzle. You see all the lard that's coming from the skin itself. Okay. We're gonna get our lemon now and do a zest with the lemon. If you don't have a zester, you could do what I'm doing right now. Just cut, get the yellow part off. Okay, and then we're gonna turn it around and we're just gonna give it a nice thin slice. All right, now we have our lemon zest ready. Once our duck breast is 
ready to go in the oven. We'll throw it with our asparagus in the pan with it, along with some of the lemon zest. Now what we want to do here too, on the, on the side with no fat, we really don't want to cook it long. We don't want to brown it or anything. So we're just going to like skim it to give it a little flavor like this. Okay, so what we're going to do is prep some herbs for the fat that's in the pan. We're going to baste the duck with the herbs to give it more flavor. So we have rosemary, some fresh thyme, and we're going to utilize our garlic and shallots. And we're going to create the, the fat we're going to turn into a seasoning and baste the duck with it going to come out amazing. And our gastric, it's, it's reducing. That's the cherries. And then what we're going to add next is the ginger and the apples. That's Granny Smith apple here. The Granny Smith apple is a very crisp apple. It's not mealy or anything. It's a great apple to cook with. And we're going to add the Granny Smith apple to the dry cherries. All right, we have fresh ginger root here. I'm going to show you a little secret how to peel this. Instead of a carrot peeler, you could use a spoon and you just scrape it and get to get the skin off. Okay, ginger really is going to enhance this, this sauce and also with the gaminess of the Meller duck breast, it's going to be magic in your mouth. Alrighty, so we're just going to cut this real thin and then again we're going to just put it there and dice it up. There's another way you could do it too. I like to put the ginger in it actually. It gets more flavor, but if you want, you have cheesecloth or something, you could put it in the cheesecloth and just squeeze the juice out and put it in. But I like to add the actual ginger in there. Okay. Alrighty, now we're going to add our herbs to the, the duck fat here to give it some flavor. We got that, we got the, the rosemary and the fresh thyme, now we're adding the shallots. And you can smell it already, that rosemary is coming out. Real nice fragrance there. I'm really digging it. So, right. So we're just turn this up just a little bit. And then, remember I said the, the skin of the duck, we want to get it, get it as crispy as possible. Look at that, looks beautiful. So I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna do some basting with it. And this is what we're talking about. We're just flavoring the duck, the meat side, not the fat side. And that's rendering. We go back to our gas gastric, see how it's coming together. Got the ginger, the apples. You can smell the vinegar coming out. You can smell the sweetness of the honey and the maple syrup. And the ginger is really going to give it a little bite. It's going to be, can't wait for you guys to try it. All right. So we'll do a little more basting here. See the garlic's brown and nicely, not too much, not overcooking it. We could even put the rosemary on top to give it more flavor, you base it. And you don't need to add no oil or nothing. Look, I didn't add no oil to that pan. And see how much fat rendered out of that duck breast? It's amazing. 
gas streak is again looking amazing. Okay, we'll take that, turn that down, and now we'll go to our sweet potatoes, which are ready to go. Bring these over here. Put that in our bowl. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this into another pan and put it in the oven to finish. I'm just gonna top it with a little bit of this duck fat. Alrighty, so we're gonna add our asparagus to the duck breast. What I'm gonna do is put the asparagus in the pan, put a little bit of duck fat over the asparagus also. Some lemon zest in there. And then we're gonna roast it. And we're gonna roast it together. And it's gonna take about 15 minutes at 450 degrees. All right, now we're all ready to go with our sweet potatoes. We're gonna uh, mash them up. We wanna do it like a smashed potato, okay? We don't want it real fine. We want some chunks in it, some texture, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little bit of butter. Not a lot of butter, just a little bit. And I'm gonna add some maple syrup. And these, the sweetness of the sweet potato maple syrup, and we're gonna add some cinnamon. It's gonna go really well with the duck. And the, the cherry sauce is really gonna highlight it also. So that's basically all we wanna do is like that. And add a little bit of cinnamon. Just a touch, and a touch of salt. And we're getting ready to plate up now. Okay, we're gonna check to see how the duck looks. After about eight to 10 minutes in the oven, looks perfect. The asparagus is well cooked with the lemon zest. The duck breast looks amazing. And now we're gonna to have to let it sit for five minutes before we cut it so all the juices do not run out. All right guys, we're ready to go here to plate up this wonderful duck dish. We got our sweet potatoes, we have our cherry sauce, and we have our beautiful duck. So first things first, what we're gonna do is put the sweet potatoes on the plate. Nice sweet potato. Like that. We're gonna get our cherry sauce. Grab our asparagus. With the lemon zest. Put that on there like that. And then for the grand finale is our duck breast. And when we slice our duck breast, we wanna make sure we have a really nice sharp knife and we have the skin side down, okay? So we get our knife all sharpened up here and we're gonna cut it. I could smell that sauce coming out of there and while I'm slicing this duck, whoo, we're gonna have some good eats here, let me tell you. Okay, so we're gonna turn it this way, put it down. This duck is a, around a nice medium. It's gonna bleed out a little bit. And all we could do is get a little more sauce here. Just drizzle it on the top. We're gonna garnish our smashed sweet potatoes with a little bit of walnuts, toasted walnuts. And let's garnish it with some chives. And there we go. It looks delicious, smells delicious, and I'm sure it's gonna taste delicious. And that's our second course. Pan-seared Meller duck breast, smashed mashed potatoes, and lemon zested roasted asparagus. Alrighty, we're on our final course here at dessert. I'm sure you all been waiting for it. So let me tell you what we have in store for you today. We have a
chocolate mousse. The chocolate mousse is raw. It's made with avocado. We're going to make a milk chocolate sauce and it's going to be dairy free. We're going to make it with cashew nuts. Also, we're going to garnish it with fresh berries. Also, the chocolate mousse is going to have mint flavor. It's going to be double delicious. All right, let's get started here. We've got the cashew nuts here. We're gonna put them in the blender. I soak these overnight so they get soft. So that way when it hits the blender with the coconut milk, it becomes a really nice and smooth. We have the coconut milk. And you know what? Don't be intimidated by this. I'm just putting this stuff in. It's very easy. It's, you don't have to measure this. This isn't like baking or anything. This is a raw dessert. So you could even, as you're testing this out, you could add things that you want to add. If you don't want to add the mint, you could add vanilla or um, pistachios to it to make different things. So but we're going to do mint today. So I'm adding the coconut milk. Okay, so we got coconut milk, cashews, and then we're gonna add some honey because we need some sweetness. And instead of using regular sugar, we're using honey. And, you know, just like you're, you're flavoring your tea, you know, whatever sweetness you like, your tea or your coffee, that's how much honey you're gonna put in. Also, I'm gonna add a little bit of maple syrup. The maple syrup gives it a nice flavor also. And after these, Two items, we're going to start blending it. Now, I'm going to add what's going to make it the chocolate. It's the cacao powder, okay? And we're just going to add a little at a time, okay? I would say that's about a quarter cup. We're going to let it come together, okay? Now I'm gonna look in there, check it out. It's looking good. We're gonna put it on high speed a little longer to get a little uh, smoother. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more coconut milk. There we go, see, it's like a ribbon. That's what you're looking for, that consistency. It's, it's called a ribbon consistency when it flows all together like that. We're gonna put our chocolate sauce in a container. Okay, since our chocolate sauce is finished, we're gonna clean the blender and get ready to make our avocado mousse. All right, we're off to the next step is the avocado mousse. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut the avocado in half like that, twist it like that. Then we get the knife, stick it in there like that and turn it and the seed comes right out. Okay, so we're gonna cut that in half this way, cut it in half this way. And then we're gonna probably, with this recipe, we'll probably just do two avocados. Okay, again, cut it like that. Get your knife, stick it in there, and it comes right out. Woohoo! And then we just get our finger, we put it down there, run it across the skin, put it in there. We want to make sure the avocado is very ripe because, well, not very ripe where it's black, but we want it to be uh, very soft, rich. The fats will mix together better, the avocado oils and that are, are really good for you also. This dessert, it's incredible. You, you will never guess that you're eating avocados with that taste so much like chocolate. It's, it's amazing. So, okay, we'll clean this part up. Just wash my hands because it gets a little messy. I'm really excited about this dessert for you guys to see it because it it doesn't take long. That's That chocolate sauce that I just made took what? Two minutes? Same with the mousse here. Now with the mousse, we're gonna add the cocoa powder, okay, in a bowl, separate bowl. And again, you know, I'm just adding the cacao powder and then I'm gonna add honey. Whoa. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get that. 
honey in there because that's what's making it sweet because the cacao powder is pretty strong in flavor. Add a little bit of maple syrup and we're gonna whip this up. Usually you can put it all in the blender, but I like to do this part separate because it doesn't get all powdery in there, it blends together nicer. So it takes a couple times to mix the honey and the maple syrup for this to become a sauce. Okay, so we're gonna do it again. And you'll see the consistency that we're looking for. And if you can, you know, the best thing to do is try to use all organic products. If you could, you know, change your diet to all whole foods, you'll feel a big difference in your diet. And this dessert is one of those desserts that, you know, it doesn't have real sugars and it's all natural sugars. Okay, you see how it's coming together now? Okay. Now this mixture with the avocado being pureed in the blender is gonna become a nice rich chocolate mousse. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt in there. And with my rubber spatula, I'm gonna add the chocolate to the avocado. You know, when you're making a real chocolate mousse, you have to whip heavy cream, you have to put eggs in it, you have to whip egg whites, melt chocolate with butter. Not here. And this, instead of taking, you know, three hours to make chocolate mousse to four hours for it to set up, you got chocolate mousse within five minutes. Shut the blender off so you get deeper down in there. If you have a high power mixer, like a Vitamix or something like that, you know, you, get, you have a magic wand that goes in there that helps you do this as it's running at the same time. But for this mixer, you know, just take your time. Don't, don't worry about it. If this is what you have at home, make it work. Here we go. So turn it back on. All right, we're ready for our next step now. We got the chocolate mousse all whipped up here in the blender. We're gonna add it back to the bowl where we made that chocolate sauce. And that way we could incorporate that chocolate sauce that we started in the beginning to add to the avocados. Dig deep, get it all out of there. So you see that consistency? It's a nice pudding consistency. We're just incorporating everything and then we're gonna put it in the refrigerator for about 10, 15 minutes just to get cold. All right, the final steps now. We're gonna plate up our chocolate mousse. Again, this is a raw dessert, chocolate mousse. This is the cashew nut milk chocolate sauce. We're gonna just put it on the plate. Get our berries. Got some mint there. Just gonna put our berries on the plate. Our berries today are strawberries, raspberries, and blueberries. And actually everything I believe on this plate is organic, so it's totally organic dessert, raw dessert. All right, the chocolate mousse is here. Get my spoons. And then we want some texture. That's all kind of soft. The berries have texture. Now we'll add some cacao chips, fresh cacao chips. And it will enhance the flavor. And you know what? Let me just put a little smaller piece of mint on there. I don't want to hide that beautiful chocolate mousse. And there we go. Bon appetit. It's one of the best chocolate mousses that are 
that's made from avocado, I, I think you would have a hard time knowing it comes from avocado. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode and letting me share my recipes with you. Until next time, let the party begin.